We're in Durham at the Dun Cow Inn, which is Peter Brooks' favourite pub in the whole country. We're also just being overlooked by Durham Cathedral, about half a mile away behind me, uh, which is Bill Bryson's favourite building in the entire world, and justifiably so. Also, we've got some excellent contestants, some local lads and a couple from out of town who have come to join us to play this round seven of Q12. It should be a very close competition today. I'm really looking forward to asking these questions. Uh, and the players we have today, uh, we're going to kick off with our host today, who is... Mike Leonard. I'm the landlord of the Dun Cow. I run a weekly quiz here, usually as question master, so it's going to be novel for me to be on the other side of the questions for a change. My name is Barry Howbridge. I run a and b in Newcastle. Uh, I play occasional pub quizzes and play for the Gossip Empire quiz team in other competitions. Hi, I'm Keith Marshall. Our first program, program was a program called Now You See It in the early 80s when I won 500 quid in a holiday to Spain. Since then I've been on the crypt. In fact, uh, I was on that daily quiz show called The Biggest Show in Town or something like that. Uh, and I won a £5,500 jackpot. And I was a member of the Gosford <coughs> Empire uh, CIU quiz team. And I'm looking forward to the quiz today. Thanks. Hi, uh, my name's Mike Foden. I'm a nurse. And I'm another member of the Gosford Empire team. I take part in various pub quizzes. And uh, along with Keith Marshall here, I was in the final final of uh, the Syndicate TV series. Hi, I'm Mark Kerr. Um, I played against Keith Marshall on Discovery Mastermind when he did Amphibians, yeah, I think. Yeah. Um, I got to the final that year. Um, I've also been on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and was quite successful through here. Hi, I'm Barry Simmons. I was a member of the only England quiz team to have won the European Quiz Championship in 2004 in Ghent. I'm the current master BBC Radio 4 Master Team Champion. I'm a semi-finalist on Mastermind and Brain of Britain and I've also won a few bob on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and come and have a go if you think you're smart enough. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dave Taylor, I'm from Sunderland, I've um, been a semi-finalist too on Brain of Britain and I was on a member of the team that did manage to beat the Eggheads. David Sanders, work in Sunderland, live in Durham, never done a quiz before but I've set a few in my time. I do the annual charity quiz in this pub. Peter Robson, another member of the Gosworth Empire. Um, this year we finished second in the National CIU Finals. We've twice won it in the past. I've uh, won not the whole 15 to 1, but a programme of 15 to 1, and also reached the semi final of quiz night many years ago. And I actually set two quizzes a week and have done for about the last 16 years. That's why I'm grey. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Adam Wilson, I live in Durham and I work in the Durham Cow. I've never done this before, so it's all new to me. <laughs> so we've got Adam there as favourite with a few people training along behind him. Well, most of you who've watched this before will understand that in the first round we have 12 minutes worth of questions. Each correct answer is worth one point. It's all on the buzzer. Speed counts. An incorrect answer loses half your points. Gentlemen, the first eight will go through into the next round. Your first question is coming up now. In the early hours of September 30th, 2007, which British driver won the Japan... Six, Mark Kerr. Lewis Hamilton. Lewis Hamilton is correct for one point. Only two counties, only two modern ceremonial English counties are named after rivers. Name one of them. Four, Keith Marshall. Avon. I'm afraid it's not a ceremonial county anymore. Eight, Dave Taylor. Lose nothing. <laughs> Ten, Peter Robson. Merseyside. Merseyside, correct. The other one is Tyne and Weir. I thought you might have got that one. Uh, which noun is used to describe any form of an element that is a distinctly... Four, Keith Marshall. Isotope. I'm afraid it's the wrong answer. Any form of an element that has a distinctly different molecular structure... Six, Mark Kerr. Allotrope. Allotrope is the correct answer. Another point. Next question. Katie Melua, William Shatner and Elton John with a billboard number one have all covered which Beatles song from the Sgt Pepper's album? Nine, Dave Sanders. Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds is correct, one point, you're on the board. Next question. To which family of birds does the blue jay belong? Six, Mark Kerr. Crow. It is a crow or corvidae. 
Next question. As of the 8th of September 2007, in which country is the world's tallest man-made freestanding structure on land at fa... Nine, David Sanders. Dubai. I'm afraid it's not Dubai. Lose half a point. Eight, Dave Taylor. I was going to say Dubai. Lose half a point. Seven, Barry Simmons. Poland. Not Poland, and lucky. Four, Keith Marshall. Malaysia. Not Malaysia. Two, Barry Howbridge. Czechoslovakia. Czechoslovakia. I've had enough. It's Canada. According to Wikipedia, which Welsh side were, I quote, the only side to beat the Invincible All Blacks of 1962? Two, Barry Howbridge. Newport. Newport is correct. That was a throwover from last week's questions. <laughs> Currently voiced by Wayne Allwine, which character created by Ub Iverks was voiced by Walt Disney until 1946 and made his first steam at uh, first... <laughs> Six, Mark Kerr. Mickey Mouse. A Mickey Mouse question if I ever heard one. Well, you all had the opportunity to try there, so well done. What Inuit word translates to eater of rock? Seven, Eskimo. Barry Simmons. Eskimo. Eskimo. Calm down, Barry. Which future US president drafted the declaration of... Six, Mark Kerr. Jefferson. Jefferson is correct. Number 12. At over 7,000 kilometres long, caused by the subduction of the NASCAR plate beneath the South American plate. Eight, Dave Taylor. San Andreas Fault. I'm sorry, that's a wrong answer, Dave. Unlucky. Seven, Barry Simmons. The Andes. The Andes is the correct answer. What is the world's longest mountain range? Well Based done. Which 2,286-seat West End Theatre located off Oxford Street saw Ian Drury and Bing Crosby's last concerts but multiple deaths by Jimmy Tarbuck? I'm only joking. Nine, David Sanders. Palladium. The Palladium is a correct answer. Well done, David. I must have an immediate answer. Spell Marilyn Monroe. Seven, Barry Simmons. M-A-R-I-L-Y-N-M-O-N-R-O-E. You've won. Well done. <laughs> Next question. Founded in 1864 following the discovery of gold along Last Chance Creek, by 1888 it had more millionaires per capita than any city in the world. The birthplace of Gary Cooper and Dirk Bennett. Eight, Dave Taylor. San Francisco. It was an optimistic press, I'm afraid not. The birthplace of Gary Cooper and Dirk Benedict. What is the capital city of the treasures? Six, Mark Kerr. Sacramento. Lose half your points. <sighs> Seven, Barry Simmons. Carson City. Oh, how the mighty are falling. What is the capital of the treasure state, Montana? <laughs> Two, Barry Howbridge. Bismarck. No, it's not the goat. Barry, would, I mean, sorry, uh, you don't get any points, but Mark, tell us what it is. Helena. Helena, and you have a daughter called? Helena. Oh, dear me. <laughs> Next question. Come on, Adam. <laughs> you never knew the contestants were sitting right next to me, did you? Which creature was caught in the River Weir, grew to a massive... Ten, Peter Robson. Lumpen worm. Where are you, man? I'm guilty. <laughs> <laughs> the Lampton Worm. Yeah, yeah. It went on to tell you about an awful story. I'll sing it too much. Oh, God, OK. <laughs> the Norwegian features of Armelie, Tisse and Vestri Madu... Seven, Barry Simmons. Waterfalls. It's a waterfall special quiz today. One point for Barry. Next question. Which was the only wife of Henry VIII to bear him a son? Six, Mark Kerr. Jane Seymour. Jane Seymour is correct. Which international border is crossed the... Mo Four, Keith Marshall. USA and Canada. No. Seven, Barry Simmons. USA and Mexico. Yes. <sighs> Lucky game. Whose album did Time magazine call the best of the 1980s? Featuring two discs and the tracks Play in the Sunshine, If I Was Your Girlfriend, You... Five, Mike Foden. Prince. Yeah, you actually didn't have to say anything there. I would have still given you the point. Which carpet fitter won the English Amateur Golf Championship? Four, Keith Marshall. Tony Alcock. <laughs> <laughs> That's an appropriate answer. Uh, the English Amateur Golf Championship and the British Youth Championship in 1975. Go. Five, Mike Foden. David Bryant. Not David Bryant. Two, Barry Howbridge. Nick Faldo. Yes, Nick Faldo. Going on to win three Masters titles and so opens check. in 1987, 1990 and 1992. We're going over to Peter Brook for a score check. It's getting a little tighter now, Steve. That middle section saw a few uh, penalties taken. We have a joint leaders in Mark Kerr and Barry Simmons, both of which have three and a half points positive. Peter Robson is in second place with two, and Barry Howbridge with 1.5, sharing that with David Sanders. Uh, Mike Foden and Mike Leonard follow on afterwards, but 
we still have three or four non-scorers. Come on, guys. It's nice to see Mark and Barry pressing with gay abandon. <laughs> Next question. Sometimes cited as the first science fiction novel published in 1816, what is the best-known title? Six, Mark Kerr. Frankenstein. Is the right answer of Mary Shelley's The Modern Prometheus. Rarotonga is the most populous of which group of islands in the south... Two, Barry Howbridge. Society. No, I'm afraid not. Lose half. Group of islands in the South Pacific. Is Four, Keith Marshall. Fiji? Nope. Eight, Dave Taylor. Tonga. Nope. One, Mike Leonard. Solomon. Rarotonga is the most populous of which group of islands in the South Pacific? Originally named the Hervey Islands by the man who explored them in 1773 and 1779. They were renamed in honour of the man who did explore them. Six, Mark Kerr. Cook Islands. Cook Islands. <laughs> Straighten up, Steve. Which 19th, 20th century playwright described fox hunting as... Six, Mark Kerr. Oscar Wilde. Yes. <laughs> Next question. Bounded by the Outer Circle and surrounded by Baker Street, Marylebone Road, Albany Street, Prince Albert Road and Park Road, in which park is London Zoo situated? Eight, Dave Taylor. Regent's Park. Regent's Park is a good point. The very first man to be sacked as an FA Premier League manager, and up to the 11th of September 2007, the last man to replace Alex Ferguson as a manager. Who died on that day? Six, Mark Kerr. Ian Porterfield. And as a Leeds fan, God rest his soul, bless him. In 1966, on the UK singles chart, starting on the 14th of the 4th, which four spent four weeks when they fought the law? Six, Mark Kerr. Time's up. No, I don't know. Five, Mike Foden. Bobby Fuller. The Bobby Fuller four is correct. The class made a good version as well. Three minutes. Next question. <coughs> which word... In the phonetic alphabet represents the 17th letter of the English alphabet. Four, Keith Marshall. Sierra? I'm sorry. Eight, Dave Taylor. Quebec. Correctamundo. <laughs> That's Correctamundo spelt with a Q. At which Olympics were nine Israeli athletes? Seven, Barry Simmons. Munich. Munich is correct, except 1972. Which disease is also known as Hansen's? Seven again, Barry Simmons. Leprosy. Leprosy is the correct answer. Who was the mother of King James the First? Seven, Barry Simmons. Mary Queen of Scots. Yeah, you're on a roll. You're going to keep these people out, or what? Which journalist and broadcaster who died in 2004 sent his first American... Two, Barry Howbridge. Alistair Cook. Alistair Cook is the correct answer. Between which two countries does the horseshoe falls lie? Two, Barry Howbridge. Venezuela and... Uh... No. Four, Keith Marshall. USA and Canada. Yes, about the time that one came, it wasn't it? <laughs> Congratulations, one point. On which continent is the Kalahari Desert? Six, Mark Kerr. Africa. Correct. The Lone Ranger's horse had one. It's four, Keith Marshall. Silver. Silver is correct. Peter, it's close. It is getting close, Steve. Barry is now in the lead with 6.5 points. Mark Kerr with 4.75 points. Then there's a group. Keith Marshall with two, Dave Taylor with two, Peter Robson with two, Mike Foden one and a half, David Sanders one and a half. Barry Howbridge, 0.88. <laughs> and Mike Leonard and Adam Wilson yet to score. How long have we got to go, Peter? 1.18 minutes. Good luck, fellas. In which spot would the New York Yankees play the... Two, Barry Howbridge. Baseball. Baseball is correct. The Golden Bear was... Four, Keith Marshall. Jack Nicholas. You are so far in front there. Well done, one point. On July the 3rd, 1938, which engine on the slight downward... Eight, Dave Taylor. My lord. Yeah, you're getting the hang of this. Well done, David. In which decade did Britain join the European... E Four, Keith Marshall. 1970s. 1970s is correct with a sidereal period of 247.7 Earth years. Four, Keith Marshall. Pluto. Correct. What is the capital of France? <laughs> Four, Keith Marshall. Paris. How did you know that one? Wow! What is the main colour of the February birthday on... Four, Keith Marshall. Yellow. Lose half your points. 
A seven, Barry Simmons. Purple. Lose no points, one point. Violet and purple, Amethyst, February's best though. Next question, from which country did Paddington... Four, Keith Marshall. Peru. Peru. Who owned the chocolate factory? Time's up. Four, Keith Marshall to answer this question. <laughs> <laughs> A second loss, next one. Ten, Peter Robson. Uh, Willy Wonka. Willy Wonka is the correct answer. Gentlemen, well done, that's the end of round one. Unfortunately, we must say goodbye for the time being to Mike and Adam, who have been very good to join us today. Welcome to the real world, and we'll see you behind the bar. Round two will be coming up in just a minute. Thank you. seven of Q12 after one of the best first rounds we've had so far in the series promises to be a very exciting second round this is round two if you don't know the rules by now go back to one of the previous films and have a look at it I think the gentlemen know that you can score high or lose high by pressing in early first question which building for six points was converted into a prisoner of war camp holding Scottish prisoners after the Battle of Dunbar in 1650 for five points, it has a web page at http colon slash slash whc dot unesco dot org slash on slash list slash 370. For four points, that web page designates it number 370 of over 800 World Heritage Sites. Two, Barry Howbridge. Edinburgh Castle. Not Edinburgh Castle, very unlucky, lose four points. For three points, it is dedicated to Christ, Blessed Mary the Virgin and St Cuthbert. Six, Mark Kerr. Durham Cathedral. Is the correct answer. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. <laughs> the very first clue I thought I was Durham Cathedral. Your second question. An element. Which element for six points has an atomic mass of 40.078? For five points, it is the fifth most abundant element in the Earth's crust. For four points, it has the atomic number 20. For three points, it is a soft grey alkali... Two, Barry Howbridge. Aluminium? I'm afraid not, Barry, minus two. For three points, it is a... Minus three, sorry. For three points, it's a soft grey alkali earth metal. For two points, it's presence in milk and cheese. Seven, Barry Simmons. Calcium. Two points and you've got your points on the board, Barry. Well done. Number three. Who were born 54 days apart in 1975 and lived their early lives less than two miles apart. They had a number one with each... Ten, Peter Robson. Anton Deck. Correct answer. A little round of applause there. <laughs> Um, I might add, Peter, that if it had said had a number one with eternal love in Japan, it might have put you off getting the right answer. No, that would have given it away. <laughs> Peter's, <laughs> Peter's absolutely miles in the lead with uh, four points. What mountain at 4,478 metres, that's 14,693 feet, straddles for five points the Italian-Swiss border? Seven, Barry Simmons. Mont Blanc. Minus five... <laughs> And for four points, was first climbed on the 14th of July, 1865, by... Two, Barry Howbridge. Matterhorn. Is the correct answer. That's a good four points, and that's turned this particular game on its head. Question number five. Which group originally comprised of O'Kelly, Rudolph... Number five, Mike Foden. The Asley Brothers. Awesome answer. That's an absolutely fantastic six points and almost guarantees you a place in the final of today's game. What is caused by a virus within the orbivirus genus of the family Rerovirades? For five points, it was first described in South Africa. Nine, David Sanders. Human immunodeficiency virus. I'm afraid that's the wrong answer. That's minus five, David. What was first described in South Africa, five points, but has since been recognised in most countries in the tropics and subtropics. For four points, it's a disease of animals affecting all ruminants, including sheep, cattle, deer, goats and camelids. 
for three points is characterised by changes to the mucous linings of the mouth and nose. Seven, Barry Simmons. Blue tongue. Is the correct answer, Barry? Back in business with three points. Well done. Peter, this is an exciting game. Well, we've got an interesting middle ground, which I'll tell you about. Mike Foden's in the lead at the moment with six. Peter Robson with four. Mark Kerr with three. We then have three players tied on zero points. Barry Simmons, Dave Taylor and Keith Marshall. Following on behind at the present, Barry Howbridge on minus three. David Sanders on minus five. The round of death. Halfway. Number seven. Good luck. Fingers on the buzzer, gentlemen. I wish you could all go through. Who was christened with the middle name Whipper? W I P P E R. For five points. After his birth on May the 3rd, 1952. Good job there's no buzzers in the audience. For four points. This athlete was featured in the video of Bell and Sebastian's I'm a Cuckoo. For three points, he was one of the first athletes to use cycle shorts. For two points, he was one of the last to use that. Five, Mike Foden. Alan Wells. Alan Wells, yeah. emphasising his place at the top. That was for two points, the last of these starting blocks, which Scott won the 100 metre gold medal at the 1980 Moscow Olympic Games. Next question, number eight, what number? was proven irrational by Johann Heinrich Lambert in 1761. Eight, David Taylor. Pi. Pi. How far was Barry behind him? Uh, 0.15 of a second. Unlucky. Pi is a correct answer for six points. Mm. Which city's inhabitants are informally referred to as Janners? J-A-N-N-E-R-S. Four, Keith Marshall. Johannesburg. Minus six. For five points, it has nearly a quarter of a million inhabitants. For four points, it was briefly occupied and burnt by the French in 1403. For three points, Captain Robert Falcon Scott. Six, Mark Kerr. Plymouth. Absolutely the correct answer. Well done, Mark. Three questions to go. What's the score? At the present, we have four players in the danger zone. Barry Simmons on zero. Barry Howbridge, minus three, David Sanders, minus five, and Keith Marshall, minus six. And in the leading section, we have Mike Foden on eight, Mark Kerr on six, Dave Taylor on six, and Peter Robson on four. Question ten. Who appeared as a card player in Star Trek, the Next Generation episode, Time's Arrow, being transported from the 1860s to 2369 AD and back? For five points, his adopted name means there are 12 feet of water under the boat. And it Four, Keith Marshall. Well, it's Mark Twain, so... Uh, it's Mark Twain, I'll give you Mark Twain, that's fine. I'll Samuel Longhorn Clemens, that is a good five points, well done. Number 11, which actor, whose most famous role is that of a vertebrate paleontologist, for five points was born of Jewish parents. Seven, Barry Simmons. David Schwimmer. I'm afraid it's right. Right answer. for the rest of you, it's the right answer. Well done, Barry. <laughs> Good five <laughs> points. <sighs> <sighs> who can afford to rest? Who needs to press and who's out of it? Well, that changes things. Uh, Barry now has five points and is just out of the danger zone. Ahead of, him is, ahead of him is Dave Taylor on six, Mark Kerr still on six, and Mike Ford on eight. Currently, red zone, Peter Robson just behind Barry with four points, Keith Marshall minus one, Barry Howbridge minus three, David Sanders minus five. Keith was 0.07 behind Yeah. Which animal? For six points, with no universally agreed upon plural in the English language. Four, Keith Marshall. Rhinoceros. No, Ooh. minus six. Yeah. You're out of here. For five points, is one of the few venomous mammals. Seven, Barry Simmons. Platypus. Is correct. Well done, Barry, and you've <laughs> cemented your place in the final. What a round. 
Peter, who are we going to say goodbye to and you say goodbye to them for me? Five to Barry. Well, very bad luck and commiserations. We do say goodbye to Peter Robson, uh, Barry Howbridge, David Sanders and Keith Marshall. Bad luck, guys. Shake hands with them. Thank you. Yeah. We're back in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Part three of round seven of Q12, and I think this is the best one we've had so far. We've had some great players knocked out so far, and we've got some titans left in. We've got Mike Foden, who uh, represents the Gothforth Empire Club. These people have been CIU champions. We've got Mark Kerr, representing the Rainhill Victorians. They've been champion of their own Liverpool Quiz League, and what is probably the European Cup of Quiz, the entire Liverpool Quiz League's Cup winners. We've got Barry Simmons, who's plays for a team of which keep changing the name of the Five Towns Quiz League, but have just won everything over the last three or four years and one third of the current Radio 4 Master team. And we've got Dave Taylor who play for Ashbrook who uh, have been Sunderland Quiz League champions. We've got a rare eclectic selection of players playing here and I will take this opportunity to say that uh, we have uh, we are going to have another series of these events for teams starting in February so I hope you'll all bring your teams along. Teams of three and it will rock, I assure you. So, if anybody's watching this on telly, get your team together. But don't bother if you want to use mobile phones and giggle about it. This is serious stuff. <laughs> Round three, you'll know, is the first person to achieve 12 points will win. £100 and a place in the final in December. The questions are worth one point for each correct answer. No points penalty if you get one wrong, but you lose a life. You have three lives, and then you'll be wallied out. Hard to know how this one would go. I might actually go to Peter and say, who are you tipping, mate? <laughs> this is a real close call, to be honest, Steve. I'll, um, I'll put it a close call between Barry and Mark, but uh, we cannot ignore these guys from the north, my own, my own town here. I think Dave and Mike will give it a right good run. And I think the pressing fact about the last round was uh, Mike was way out in front. Mm. OK, mm. good luck, chaps. Limbered up, ready to go. Fingers on the buzzers. Here's your first question. Whose gala takes place in Durham on the... Eight, Dave Toller. Durham Miners. The Durham Miners is correct. Between 1961 and the 22nd of November, 1963, who was the... Five, Mike Foden. John F. Kennedy. John F. Kennedy is your first point. What was the original name, now restored, of that area of the United States with the appropriate telephone area code 321, which, between 1963 and 1973, was called Cape Kennedy? Five, Mike Foden. Cape Canaveral. Cape Canaveral is the correct answer. Next question. It's about the tenth, actually, but you'll only see three <laughs> on telly. Which former Redcoat was the only host of 326, Mark Kerr? Rogers. Yes, Ted Rogers. As opposed to Claude. <laughs> oh, William. Hold up, it's very hard. Next question, good luck. The featured prizes on the first 3 to 1 were a year's supply of whiskey and what kind of large dog? Of Five, Mike Foden. Poodle. One life. And what kind of large dog, alternatively called an Alpine mas Mastiff, arguably the most famous one? Six, Mark Kerr. St. Bernard. St. Bernard's correct answer puts you on two. Give any year in the life of Beethoven the... Six, Mark Kerr. 1800. 1800 is fine. 1770 to 1827 were the brackets. Three points. Which poet was born on April the 7th, 1770, in Cockermouth, Cumbria? Seven, Barry Simmons. Wordsworth. Your point's down already. Which is the nearest professional rugby league team to Cockermouth? Six, Mark Kerr. Workington. Workington is the correct answer. Well done for not falling into the Whitehaven trap. Who sang the opening titles to the film Working Girl, winning a Best Song Oscar? Five, Mike Foden. Carly Simon. Let the River Run is worth a point. Well done. Puts you on three points. 
Which river rises in the southern end of the Plateau de Langres, a chain of hills which runs from northeast to southwest through the department of Côte d'Or? Its headwaters are approximately 29 kilometers northwest of Dijon, the second longest river in France, passing through Rouen, Troyes, and Paris. Seven, Barry Simmons. I think you've got the right answer there. Who starred alongside Paris Hilton in the original Fox reality series, The Simple Life? Five, Mike Foden. Nicole Ritchie. The correct answer will be going to Peter for a roundup after this. Of which group was Lionel Ritchie? The Six, Mark Kerr. The Commodores. The Commodores. How are we shaping up, Peter? Currently in the lead is Mark Kerr with five points. Um, he has all three lives intact. Mike Foden is following closely behind with four, but only has two lives left. Both our other contestants have their lives remaining and have scores of two on one respectively, and that's Barry with two and Dave with one. Being given its name from the Spanish word for a female friend, what family of computers was released? Eight, Dave Taylor. Amiga. Amiga is a correct answer. Well done, Dave. Puts you with Barry. Chloe, Sasha, Jade and Yasmin were the original four members of which group of female friends? Launched by MGA... Entertainment in 2001. You're all pressing at home, I know. The cartoon characters and dolls were featured. Five, Mike Foden. Bratz. Bratz is the correct answer, Mike, and puts you in the joint lead. Dimly, played by John Voight in Bratz, the movie. McGee, played by Eve Arden in Greece. Victoria of South Park Elementary. And Seymour Skinner, formerly Armand. Six, Mark Kerr. All the principals. Principal is the correct answer. Thank you for thank you for not saying head teacher. Six points. Next question. Good luck, everybody. In a hierarchy, every employee tends. Seven. Barry Simmons. Peter Principal. Your mark is down already. Next one. What was the given name of the apostle Peter? Six. Mark Kerr. Simon. Simon is correct. Name any two of Simon Groom's co-presenters on Blue Peter. Six, Mark Kerr. Connie Hawk. No. Eight, Dave Taylor. Connie Hawk. No. Any risks? The full list was Leslie Judd, John Noakes, Christopher Venner, Tina Heath, Peter Duncan, Sarah Green, Janet Ellis and Michael Sundin. Loads to pick from. Next question. Of which organisation was Peter Duncan appointed... <laughs> Seven, Barry Simmons. Chief Scout, who was the Scouts. Yes, I wish I'd have known that a couple of years ago. Which flower is the main element in the logo of most scouting organised? Six, Mark Kerr. Fleur de Lis. A Fleur de Lis is correct and puts you on eight points, I believe. We'll be going to Peter for a roundup after this. And which book was narrated by Jean Louise Scout Finch? Six, Mark Kerr. To Kill a Mockingbird. To Kill a Mockingbird. I think that's putting you in front. Tell us about it, Peter. Yes, yes, it's it's boiling up quite nicely, but Mark Kerr at the present moment has nine. Mike Foden with five, Barry Simmons with four, Dave Taylor with two. All apart from Barry have lost their life as well. Correct. Three to go, Mark. Good luck. Good luck the rest of you. Next question. Mockingbirds and finches both belong to which giant order of which more than half of all species of birds are, are members? The group gets its name from the Latin name for the house sparrow, Eight, Dave Taylor. Passerines. Passerines or passeriforms is the correct answer. It also says grudgingly allow perching birds and prompt on songbirds. Well done, Dave. Three points. Who was the Swedish knight in... Eight, Dave Taylor. Jenny Lind. Jenny Lind is correct. Into the swing of things. To the nearest whole million either way, what is the population of Sweden? Seven, Barry Simmons. Eighteen. Nope. We've all lost a life. Have a go. About just six, Gone. Six it's, well, n nine or ten. Nine, oh. How is ten million written in scientific notation? <laughs> okay, Dave, yep, you've got it. Ten to the seven. Ten to the seven, very prompt answer. A little round of applause there, I think, for a brave answer. <laughs> Name four actors from the original Magnificent Seven. It's seven by Simmons. You'll you'll be winner. Um, three, 
Two. Charles, but you'll be in a Charles, Charles Bronson. Three, two, one. Time's up, Barry. Five, Mike Foden. You'll be in a Charles Bronson, Horst Buckles, Brad Dexter. Correct. The other ones being Robert Eli Wallach and James Coburn. Well done and lucky, Barry. Mike, good point. What was Robert Vaughan's part in The Man From Un... Mike Foden. Napoleon Solo. It's worth a point to put you on seven. On which island on the 15th of August, 1769, was... Uh, Mike Foden again. Elba. I'm afraid not. Mark Kerr. Of course he can. Was he born? That's one life for <laughs> Mike gone off. Mark, you have ten points. Ooh. Which country is immediately due north of Corsica? Barry Simmons. France. Barry, you're out of here. <laughs> Dave Taylor. Italy. Italy is a correct answer. Yes, uh, all parts of Corsica as well, strangely enough. That question worked well. <laughs> well <for me>. Next <laughs> question. You had to go for it. How many times have Italy won football's World Cup up to 2007? Three. Mike Foden. Three. Mike, Mike you're out, out as well. I'm sorry, that's wrong. Mark Kerr. Four. Four is the correct answer, and you're one away from a place Mark in the yeah. final. On most standard Western typewriter keyboards, what character shares the four key, i.e. is obtained by pressing shift at number four? And where the cue is? Free guess, anybody? It's the dollar sign. Who directed A Fistful of Dot? Mark Kerr. Sergio Leone. And I think we all know that's the correct answer. And Mark, you have a place in the final. <laughs> well, we have two Dave's, two Mike's, two Barry's, and we nearly have two Mark's in the final. I'm afraid there's only one for the time being. Congratulations. We'll be going over for a talk with these chaps in just a moment. What a wonderful game of quiz that was. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed watching it. I certainly enjoyed asking the questions, and I always enjoy sending them coming to these great places. But uh, I don't know about the players. Uh, first off, representing Sunderland. OK, Dave, uh, what went wrong there? Far too slow on the buzzer and too conservative. Have you participated on buzzers before? No. OK, so it's the first time you've seen Barry and Mark and stuff? Well, it's not the first time I've seen them, sadly. But <laughs> 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 it's the first time buzzed against them. Yeah. They are, and they are quick. I mean, uh, I was ever so pleased today, you know, with yourself and Mike, because I've done quite a few buzzer quizzes and I've, I'm familiar with Barry and Mark and how good they are, but Mike... You know, you really had a chance for a time there, didn't you? Um, yeah, I think so. I, I think my, my big mistake was the 3 2 1 about the dog. I didn't know what. I, I buzzed and had to come up with an answer. So <laughs> I've, I've been on a buzzer around once before. Uh, so that's, that's brought up my education quite a bit there. Well, it's all grist to the mill, and we'll be coming back again soon for the team event. Do you think you'll be able to get a team I in there? I think Gosforth Empire will definitely be there. Okay, that's great. Barry, 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 fame is such a fickle friend, isn't it? Hey, now, hey, I just think that if these quizzes were actually pitched in uh, to the Canterbury Tales and Greek mythology, <laughs> you would win it by so much. And uh, sometimes, I know I've played this particular version, and the way the lives creep upon you in the final round is something you cannot understand until you've actually participated in it. I mean, was it the same for you? Yes, but it doesn't help that I broke my cardinal quiz rule and that I had a couple of pints before the buzz quiz <laughs> instead of afterwards. <laughs> I've got to say, it's jolly good to see actually some people having a good old crack and uh, having a few pints of beer, but I do notice a pint of lemonade and lime in front of <laughs> yeah. uh, the captain of captains of Britain's, Britain's club cleverest and most rapacious estate agent and a great friend of mine, Mr. Mark, uh, at last. At last, yeah. Uh, I did say I'd get Tracy a bottle of wine. Are you going to be sharing it with her or are you going to be f sobering up for the next three months and revising? No, I'll, I'll, I'll have a, you know, a small drink tonight and then it's back on the training regime tomorrow. Yeah, obviously you did very well in the Mimers this year, uh, uh, but... How do you like the format where everybody gets the same question thrown at them? 
Yeah, I think, it's, I think it's a good format. Okay. It's, uh, equal, isn't it? Yeah. In the final, uh, kind of a bit of a boring question, but Pat, you'd fear. Absolutely, yeah. Did you watch Peter Edis game? Yes, I did. Impressive? Yeah, he's good. He's, he is quick, Peter. Um, you know, you've got to beat all of them, haven't you? Well, your odds have certainly come down for, for, for the next round. The, the next, uh, well, for the final. The next round will be at Sandon Bank in, Saturday, in Staffordshire, which I believe Barry might just be able to come to, especially if I give him a lift down there. <laughs> uh, I think uh, of all the quizzes, I hope the, uh, the, the production comes out all right of this, but uh, we've had a very, very high standard. We've had a high standard of people you, you've now seen them watching in the audience, people like Tony Gold over there who organised the CIU quiz, I see, and a few other luminaries. Uh, We'll be coming up here again. Can't wait to come to Durham again. But meanwhile, it'll be next stop, Staffordshire, Sandham Park, overlooking the banks of the River Trent. Thank you very much to Will on the scoreboard over there, Peter, our lucid announcer, and Jake, who does everything which people don't see behind the scenes. And a special thank you to the competitors, and especially congratulations to Mark uh, on a great Just win. See you in the final.